So this is the second half of um, logging to Kafka. So this is a Java application. They're logging Java and Java applications to Kafka. In this case, I've actually got two Kafka topics, one for just raw logs, and they will come in and be configured by the Kafka appender in Java, Log4j. And that'll just be a JSON where each metadata field in the logs ends up as its own attribute in the Kafka topic. The other one is going to be, uh, I wanted to do auditing and audit and send audit streams into Kafka and use the logging subsystem to send that. So I didn't have to write any custom code. So that's actually a custom JSON object that gets logged out instead of all the metadata fields. And so that JSON represents my audit records and I want to be able to do some work against that. So what we'll do, I ran some messages through this before. Uh, you can see here we have audit. So in this case, um, I can't actually see anything here because if I were to query in SQL, it says you actually, I'm going to, so the stuff goes into Confluent Kafka, it gets stored in the Kafka topics. I want to run KSQL against it, which basically means I'm going to keep queries running against this while we're feeding data into it. And to do that, we actually first need to map the data to a stream. So we're going to call this stream audit. This is actually going to be a JSON file. <coughs> and um, the event timestamp is going to be the timestamp for it. So in this case, we're actually going to tell Kafka to not use when it was ingested, but one of the fields. OK, so this is going to be a stream for the audit records. And you can see that there's only three fields in an audit record. There's the event index which is kind of like the audit index. There's the message itself and the event timestamp. This isn't very sophisticated. So I can actually save the stream. And to show you that uh, this could be done a little differently, I can go back to KSQL. Um, actually, yeah, let's just do this one. So we're going to show you the audit one, and then I'll show you the log topic and show you the same thing. So this, what KSQL is going to do in this screen is just going to continue, run a continuous query against this. So we're going to select star from audit uh, when changes are emitted, and we're going to run that. And so no messages are flowing through the system, so there's not anything to see now. So I'm going to come back to the program I showed in the other part. So this is the Spring Boot app that basically logs to regular does regular logging, and it also marks certain log messages to be audit messages. And so we're just, and it's going to run this event generator for 10 seconds. And we're going to put out messages. The only thing that will be different is the index. Otherwise, everything's the same. So I can actually run this with my F5 in Visual Studio Code. So this will start running. If we sit over here, we can wait and we can see that we actually get audit messages in. There's four here. Uh, it's actually going to run every second. So eventually, by the time the program stops, there'll be 10. And we can see this here. So I'm going to make this wider. Um, so basically, there were 10 messages. This isn't very interesting because the messages were the same in each one. Oh, he's having trouble with his mouth. Uh, audit message generated, but the event ID was different one. So we had 10 event IDs. There's no row key here that was generated. There's a row time when these were ingested, and we have the event timestamp. So that's basically that. What I'm going to do, though, is <coughs> go back. How did I do this? I went to the cluster, and then I went to the topics, and I went to the logs, and I went to the messages. And I went, oh, this lets me peek in the message queue. This isn't the confluent thing. I'm going to say query in case equal. Oh, it can't. So this is the log topic. You can see here that there are a bunch of fields in this, basically the timestamp, which is three fields, the thread ID, the logging level, the logger name, the message itself, uh, fully qualified domain name of the logger, the thread ID, and the thread priority. So that's those are standard Java log elements. In this case, these are also logged in JSON. So if I were to save this as a stream now, so now I have two streams that I can actually run queries against. One is audit, one is logs. In this case, I'm gonna, it's just running against the logs. We actually can do joins and things against these two streams, but we're not gonna do that here. Um, ooh, wrong one. So I'm gonna now rerun this and show you how many messages come out. So here we come back here and we hit F5, and then we go back to the browser and we wait.
and you can see here that we have several messages um, and the biggest problem here is there are so many fields so these are messages the other was a custom json logging custom json object or uh, string and that would show up in the audit queue as if those were audit fields in this case this is all the log messages that got routed through this application so i had a console appender that you could see here so you can actually see what came out to the console and then we had the kafka appender that took everything that went to the console and sent it here and they're not in the order i would expect them to be so we would need to look at why that is uh that they're in a different order probably because i don't have them sorted correctly there we go so let's scroll back and you can see here three four five six closing application if we were to scroll up starting application no profile set logging just generated one and then we're going to exit in 10 seconds and then we generate the rest of the message and then we close the application so that's it what did we do we had two topics we generated streams against them and then we were able to generated streams against them and then we were able to run ksql to query those streams while data was being processed the regular consumers wouldn't have been impacted but we would have been able to see what's happening that's it so that is logging and audit using logging to Kafka and then using streams and KSQL to view that data in the Confluent console.